sitting and nodding at everything you're saying. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you very much. You. You're not going anywhere. We're still going to abuse your psychological degree here. Some difficult truths uh, that we can all relate to, right? Uh, thank you once again to Bougie for coming through. Join us after the break as we continue to talk body shaming. And welcome back here with Real Talk on SABC3. Body shaming affects everyone and can be linked to almost any feature of our appearance from weight to hair to skin tone to the size of your lips to your nose. My next guest, Andy Sandlovu, uh, she's been a victim, but for reasons different to Bougie's. Apparently, you were too skinny for life. Yes. Oh. Um, so I was very skinny. This is me having gained, gained a, lo a little bit of weight. Yeah. Um, and, you know, in a, in a big class of family, I am up and gone, you know? <laughs> and, and, and you grow up um, with that message being communicated to you over and over again. And yeah. you go to school and, you, and other kids are teasing you about um, having these small legs. And you just, I mean, what am I going to do? What must I do um, Exactly. And to a point where, I mean, at some point I was, I was convinced I was a tomboy and I liked wearing pants, baggy pants, kind of exactly, yes. Weight. Um, and I realized, no, man, but I actually am very feminine, but I can't really be that uh. because I'm trying to hide the thing, the parts of my body that I'm, I'm, I'm shameful about. I mean, I think I'm only settling into my body and, and, and how I look now. How old are you coming out? I'm 28. 28. Yes. So you said you moved to... Um, uh, a high school in Umtata, the yes, Umtata High. Yes, no, no, St. John's College. St. John's, oh, yes. Ooh, cool, cool. <laughs> okay. So you moved there and you say that just escalated. Yes, um, and so I think that the main issue was that I was two years younger than um, people in my class. Yeah. So truly speaking, one, you're coming from a rural area where the diet and everything is completely different. You're not eating processed foods and all of that. Yes. So your body is... Lean. Yes, yeah. and you're not growing at... A, as much yes. um, rate as the, the other kids who are eating, You're growing not up eating. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, and the kids in my class are two years older than me. They are urban kids who've been eating cheese all their lives. Drinking. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so I was just this flat person next to them who looked like a boy. Yeah. Um, and I didn't get any attention from boys, and my friends were getting boyfriends and all of that. I was sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, what is wrong with me? <laughs> You know, and I mean, people who went to high school and university wouldn't tell you much about me because oh. I was the kid Invisible. who yeah, is trying to hide. And I mean, I'm very opinionated and a lot of people didn't know that mm. um, because I was always trying to hide. And, and you know, um, I, I actually wanted to do beauty contests like other girls, but I was like, mm, people are going to see my legs. Be, you know. So Bang, yeah. how much more difficult is it to deal with it from a psychological side when, when you look because, like, for, for instance, when you're skinny and you like, I get teased to being skinny. Because for mm. me, like, being like that, girl, lucky you, <laughs> like, you want to you wanna tell me you can eat and not put on weight. So, obviously, there's a certain level of difficulty in healing someone who is deemed to be lucky in the way that they mm. look, yet they were ridiculed. Yes. Uh, so, Anel, pain is pain. Ah. Um, so, if, if you are being body shamed because uh, people are saying you're fat, if they're saying you're thin, mm. um, if pain is pain. So when it comes to you as a human experience, you, it's, it's painful for you yeah. because they're not accepting the person that you are. Yeah. So you struggle to be authentic. You, you struggle to say, I'm a human being yeah. and here I am. Embrace me for who I am. And so, and, and the culture gives us different standards of beauty. Yes. We say, but this is the ideal body. Yeah. And if you don't fit into this thing, then there's something wrong with you. Mm. So uh, what I find is that most people yeah. struggle. If you ask uh, a person, and, and you say, but when you stand in the mirror, what do you see? Mm. Most people struggle with that. Uh, the, the comments that come from their brains, what they think about themselves, mm. is, is, it's not wonderful things. Mm. So I'm okay, but I think I could change this, I could yeah. cut this. Yeah. But yeah, so that's what people struggle with, pain is pain. Yeah. Is it not difficult for you because, you know, uh, You'll be like, oh, no, I'm so skinny. And people are like, but you're so lucky. <laughs> exactly. Um, I, I think my main issue was, was reconciling the, the, the messages that were being communicated to me yeah. and positive uh, feelings about myself. Um, because, I mean, if 
on a daily basis, this yeah. is, I mean, I know my legs. I see them every day. They mine. <laughs> like, they're mine. Trust me, I woke, you know, I woke up, they look to. like this. So now, if, if, if this is constantly being communicated to me that there is something wrong with the way you look, and I look at myself just like, I don't know how to then mm. um, communicate to myself that actually there's nothing wrong with, with, mm. the, with the manner in, in, in which I look. So I've, I've always had that... Um, struggle of trying to reconcile the two. You still have it. Um, no, I think I'm now settling. Yeah. I'm, I'm at that point where I, I woke up, I was like, I'm, I'm tired. Yeah. Um, I, I have to, at some point, learn how to live with what I have. There's nothing I can do with the man I which I look. Yeah. Um, and I think that's when I started appreciating mm. myself. I mean, I started wearing things that show my legs about a year or two years ago. Wow. I used to wear like ugly stockings and leggings under nice dresses because I didn't want people to see my body. Um, so, and I mean, you suffer, um, the problem is that how, how do I hide behind my own body? Uh, way, way <laughs> exactly, in the teen. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, I, I'm now settled, I'm, I'm okay, but uh, I can say that I, I've been recovering. And oh. imagine spending your late twenties recovering from daily tormenting. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so we've got a WhatsApp, and I want both of you guys to weigh in on this one. Roll it. Hi, Emily. I just want to ask the like, how do you then regain your self-esteem after you have been body shamed? How how do you regain it back if if you have lost it? Okay, so now you've been body shamed and you've had this cloud on your head since you were a child, you're in your late 20s, and I mean your formative years are far from over, yes. then how do you regain it? Uh, it's to understand the fact that you cannot be anybody but you. Mm. Um, and if you can accept yourself, it doesn't matter who says what, uh, but that is you. you. You cannot be... A different person so I would say one of the things you have to accept is that you cannot please everybody so you are unique you are yourself be yourself and then once you're comfortable with that other people's comments will just bounce off you yeah. and then you start doing things that bring joy to your heart go in the direction that excites you uh, find something that you like about yourself celebrate that and other people uh, usually catch along once mm -hmm. you're okay with yourself other people struggle to bring you down I think for me, um, it started with having frank conversations with myself and mm -hmm. the people around me. Um, and people ask, people would ask me, why don't you just wear this dress? It's so nice and all of that. And as time went, I realized that it's, it's because I, to a certain extent, I agreed with people uh, that there was something wrong with me. Uh, um, and I had to start from a point of realizing that there's actually nothing wrong with looking the, the way I look. Mm -hmm. um, and then affirming myself on a daily basis yeah. from the men if if i see a nice dress and i don't want to buy it into ask myself am i not buying it because i'm just not comfortable or oh, am wow. I, uh, it, it will reveal my legs and i don't want people to see my legs yeah. um so it's 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 those conversations that you have to have with yourself um are the difficult conversations to have obviously the most difficult one is with yourself because you can't ever leave your mind, mm. so it's a constant conversation. Mm. But I mean, you were saying even your your, your family, you know, this though, you know, <laughs> like so. Surely you have to sit down with them and be like, listen, guys, um, this is me. Yeah, I, I think as as time went, it, it sort of just stopped. Mm. Um, and also, I think pro pro people realized that it doesn't bother me anymore. Um, but also, I have learned to tell people if they say things that make me uncomfortable, that ah. actually that's just unacceptable. You're not going to say that to me. Um, so yeah, it, it's 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 a matter. It's a lot of work that you have to do internally. It's a lot of communication to people about boundaries. That the stuff you're not gonna say to me, wow. it is not acceptable. I will not take that. Um, but it 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 takes time. I like it. Takes time. You said something very profound about boundaries and like the stuff you're not gonna say to me. Uh, Tabang, would you say that it's important then when you are having these conversations with yourself to say to Anele the stuff that you're not gonna say to yourself about yourself? Definitely, uh, because remember, you can't control what, what people do to you, uh, but you control how you respond, but that starts internally. Mm. Uh, words hurt because we, we believe them partly. Mm. Uh, so if you believe that you're okay, um, 
it doesn't matter what other people say, but if you are respectful towards yourself, if mm. you are loving towards yourself, if you set your own boundaries that you don't uh, insult yourself, uh, give other people ammunition. When you are clear with that, when mm. you don't diss yourself, shame yourself, uh, then you are in a better position to deal with the rest of the world. Mm. And um, quickly in closing, and I think this is very important, I read in a book somewhere where the quickest way to know that if you have an issue with yourself is how do you react to a compliment? Yes. So, uh, yeah, right? <laughs> Definitely. So, so unpack that for us psychologically, like how is a person who's comfortable with themselves reacting and how is a person who's not comfortable with themselves reacting? Okay, so when you are comfortable with yourselves, uh, let's say we have like a, a human beings have this alarm system. C certain things move us, certain things don't. Yeah. When you are moved, pay attention. Um, so w w when you find yourself in a position, somebody says something, but it knocks you mm. or it affects you, uh, it helps you to, to actually just go into that, but why does this thing have such an influence mm. on me? And once you resolve that for yourself, then it's, it's easier to, to live your life. Mm. Tabang, like... I want you on my WhatsApp group. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, Tavon. <laughs> hey, Andy, so thank you so much as well. Thank you for I having think you've me. helped many, many a little girl and boy uh, come so to terms with themselves today. Body shaming is humiliating with often painful long term consequences. Join us after the break as we speak to a media law expert on how to sue them.